an ideology and they support one specific ideology of policy making what they do not see they do not see the concept of physical capacity as soon as a market can be constructed then the sky is the limit but the concept of the capacity of ecosystem the capacity of a society the capacity of a person is not known to the mainstream economics they do not see actual issues of growth and development and I take this from Professor Steve Keen from the University of South Australia they do not see variety for mainstream economics the world is homogeneous and we have homogeneous products with homogeneous prices and homogeneous behaviors and they do not see environmental resources as assets but they just see them as free resources what are the impacts to policy making uh, the policy advice is always for market-oriented solutions and that's the tragedy I think of our generation that's the tragedy of the last 50 years so the main policy advice you will see is deregulate privatize remove subsidies and we are opting for long-run efficiency gains even with temporary transition pain and you know what's happening the pain is always to be paid by the poor and the gains are always to be gained by the rich and that's why I'm saying that mainstream economics are not ideology free uh, in addition welfare is not part of the development discussion anymore the development has been substituted by GDP growth we used to say to talk about development but what we talk about is GDP growth and if the behavioral dimension of economic systems uh, and also the behavioral dimension of producers and consumers is completely ignored mainstream economics believe that we are computational machines that we make decision on the basis of specific rules and not because we are humans and because we have some emotions and uh, some specific behavioral patterns and last but not least the mainstream economics models used to create to construct some sophisticated financial instruments that ignore the real economy I'm referring here and I, don't, I, don't, I have no problem to, to name it the derivative products that they, they are responsible for the uh, crisis we, we, we see today many scholars these derivative products are illegal and immoral and yes I will agree they are immoral they used to be illegal but finally the mainstream economics influence the policy makers and they make them legal what are the implications for sustainable development uh, macro and macroeconomic models care only about economic growth so by definition they are not able to capture the concept of sustainable development because the sustainable development has the three pillars economic social and environmental so mainstream economics it's only about economic growth no other dimension for development matters and the role of natural resources is systematically undervaluated you will see that in many cases natural resources are either considered as free products or as products that anyone can use them at any possible uh, level even the concept of what is called environmental externalities cannot correct these problems as um, a club in, in Europe, the club of Lidnau, where Professor Weizsäcker, I think, uh, leads the club, says, if we want to accept the concept of externalities, then the whole economy is an externality to the ecosystem. One example, and I'll finish with my next two slides. Consumption. Uh, are we utilities maxi maximizers? Any time that you consume, you, you decide to buy something, are you utility maximizers? I'll tell you something. Yesterday I bought this thing. It's a new mobile phone. The utility for me is, is, is almost zero. Yeah? Because I will not make a single additional thing that I was making with my old phone. I'll make exactly the same thing. And I'll have probably the same quality of services. But it's a behavioral issue. It's a pattern. I've been either convinced by the brand name or by other friends to buy it. What about habitual choices? We used to choose something that we know, yeah? And even if I prove to you that you should not buy this because this is, this is crap, 
you will buy it because you are we are loyal to firms for example we consume therefore we exist that's what the blend a very famous economist said about 70 years uh, ago I consume therefore exist and consumption is is an act of identity than an act of rational um, activity tell me full wood do you think that full wood is part of the utility set of, of the rich people but according to economics the, f the, 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 the full wood should be part of the utility set of everyone does looking at a lake consumes the water of the lake no yes but that's another tragedy what we call environmental economics which is mainstream economics just with an environmental phase they tell us if you look at the water you consume the water and this is why they want to use an excuse to the ones that they pollute the water so mainstream economics and sustainable development are they compatible no they are not if you are showing this in the web zoom at this slide and if there's something you want to keep from my presentation is this no they are not what needs to be changed the concepts uh, economics is about studying the behaviors and not about creating markets consumers producers and the governments are about to create markets but not the economics economics should study behaviors the theory we need an evolutionary approach and approach based on the welfare the models i think ge general equilibrium should be abandoned and we need dynamic and non linear models we need to change education and fortunately some heterodox economics are gaining ground although uh, the old dinosaurs do not allow to the young scholars uh, to express their positions and what we can do because we are not all economists I think we can focus on people and not on markets uh, we should respect the capacity either biological physical environmental social promote diversity treat behavior uh, as an emergent issue and not as individual behavior and I'm taking this again from Steve Keen and last but not least challenge mainstream arguments like the arguments that they say to us free trade is always better than protection market prices are always better than subsidized ones and private is always better than public all these are assumptions of mainstream economics which I hoped I proved that they are not compatible with sustainable development so probably these arguments are not compatible with sustainable development at all thank you very much thank you very much uh, dr stefanos that was a very very inspiring uh, contribution and I, I can see your uh, very in-depth experience as a lecturer uh, thank you very much I think we have heard quite some shortcomings or lacks of the uh, modern economics, the, the, the uh, mathematical models you have been uh, talking to us, but you also gave us um, some solutions. So now I would like to open the floor to give some comments. Yes, Professor Mori, please. Yesterday we discussed uh, happiness. So could you tell us uh, the limit of economy you know, in relation to happiness? Uh, I think that mainstream economics are incapable of capturing happiness as a concept because they don't care about happiness. And they, they, they have the assumption that happiness is coming from consumption and the more you consume, the more happy you are. And uh, it's extremely problematic. Talking about happiness, and because I have studied a little bit the concept of uh, gross national happiness, I think that it's a, it's a great concept. But we, and especially the scholars working on happiness, should be very careful because the mainstream economists try to suck it out. And what they try to do is they try to construct an artificial model that it will express happiness as an equation. And there are some economists, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, and I'm sorry to say this over the, the web, I think they're perverse actually. That they want to construct an equation that it will give a number, a quantitative value to happiness. So I think that you really, the, the scholars that they are talking about happiness as a concept should fight for this, but 
beware about these economies that they try to do happiness.